and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Monika Sturm, working in the energy space already since decades. My current responsibility is heading the Strategy and Incubation Unit for Digital Solutions globally at Siemens Energy. Siemens Energy mission is to empower you to meet the growing global demand for energy while transitioning to a more sustainable world. What are the key aspects of the energy transition and do we have to act now? Let me start to introduce the current situation. In order to reach the Paris Climate Agreement, we have to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. If we don't act now, global warming will go up to 3.5 degrees Celsius. That will lead to ice-free Atlantic, weaker Gulf Stream, the hot summers with the devastating fires and many more aspects. The last exit goal for global warming is the two degree climate target, which requires a deep CO2 reduction now. In this talk, I will introduce you to the uncomfortable truth about decarbonization. Let me start with the first point. Are fossil fuels still needed? The installed generation capacity of renewable energy is increasing every year. Globally, it is set to grow by nearly 160% until 2035. While this is certainly good news for the climate, there are two things we need to keep in mind. The first point, renewable power is intermittent. Sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. We need to store the energy first in order to make efficient use of it. Second, today's power grid is not equipped for the intermittency of renewable power. When the renewable power increases in the grid, then the grid inertia is reduced, putting the grid stability at risk. Inertia is critical because it acts as a buffer to protect the entire energy system for rapid changes in frequency. This is why we need fossil fuels and efficient thermal power plants in our decarbonization journey. Power plants with turbines and generators can provide short circuit power and balance between real power and reactive power. Plus, Decarbonization needs a holistic step-by-step -step approach. We cannot just retire conventional power plants from one day to another while con uh, covering the growing power demands. Efficient, low-carbon thermal power plants are needed as a bridging solution to deep decarbonization. Now, there are different types of fossil fuels being used in today's energy system including coal. 70% of global CO2 emissions in the power generation sector are caused by coal power plants. Switching the fuel from coal to gas, if possible under the current political situation, could reduce CO2 emissions by up to 70% depending on the configuration of the power plant and operation conditions. Another option to low carbon power plants is hydrogen co-firing by mixing hydrogen into gas. Hydrogen co-firing technology is already available today. So in summary, we need to leverage low carbon fossil power generation to pave our way to deep decarbonization. The second point I would like to mention is renewables don't come for free. The production cost of renewable power has dramatically decreased in the past 10 years, especially for solar PV. Sun is free and so is wind. But making efficient use of the renewable energy is not free. Using wind and solar as source of energy on a bigger scale to replace the old energy system will be quite expensive. So massive investments are needed. 
and also shifting towards renewable energy and green hydrogen will have a profound impact on the geopolitical landscape. According to the 2021 political risk outlook, countries most dependent on oil export also have the highest risk of political instability. These countries will need to adapt to avoid serious economic consequences. Procurement of raw materials for sustainable energy is also fractious. Another area that requires investment is raw materials. Components like cobalt, lithium and iridium are crucial to producing batteries and green hydrogen, which requires significant investment to further optimize its production cost and distribution networks. All these changes will create costs of which we are only just beginning to really understand the impact. Let me also look at a different uh, area where huge investments are needed. In fact, massive inf investments of roughly 54 trillion US dollars are needed by 2050. The European Union is already investing 150 billion euros, equivalent to roughly 160 billion US dollars. The US government was rather hesitant in terms of I its investments, but Biden's administration is committed to tackling the climate crisis and they set up a budget of 369 billion with the new infrastructure bill and Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, which was just released a couple of weeks ago, end of July. And with this, we have an increase of nearly a factor of 10 over the fiscal year 2021. So why do we need such, such massive investments? The energy transition requires many things, but most of all, we need an efficient grid system and a large-scale energy storage capacity. To handle an influx of renewable energy, the current energy system needs almost 100 million kilometers of transmission lines globally. Experts estimate it could cost 300 billion per year. Energy storage is critical to decarbonization the power system, as I have mentioned it already before. It plays an important role in building resilient electricity grids that can handle the variable nature of renewable energy sources in providing more flexible access to renewable power. We are witnessing more and more deployment of battery storage systems. According to the International Energy Agency, the net zero emission scenario predicts 585 gigawatt of installed capacity for energy storage in 2050. Third point I wanted to discuss with you is the topic of is technology an issue? There are still innovations necessary to commercialize and make it affordable, but we have the technology to create the energy with a much lower greenhouse gas footprint. In Europe, the net zero transition will create around 11 million jobs while eliminating roughly 6 million. Similar gains and losses will be seen around the world and regions whose economies have been tied to coal will be particularly affected and will likely bear the worst impact from decarbonization. This massive shift will require retaining and support for millions of workers to avoid leaving large groups of the population behind and unemployed. Electricity consumption is also expected to double by 2040, especially in developing countries. This is why we have to initiate a fair distribution of climate change costs and benefits under acceptable arrangements for social and economical growth. 
The last question I would ask you is infrastructure an issue? We need to gear up for sector coupling. Yeah? As adding to the renewable energy of the electrical grid will not solve the climate crisis on its own. Decarbonization must happen across our entire economic system and across different sectors. The industry and transportation sector are one of the biggest greenhouse gas emitters. In 2019, the combined emissions from industry totaled 36 gigatons. That's nearly a quarter of global CO2 emissions. And the mobility sector is responsible for 21% of the global CO2 emissions. This is why transforming the energy sector alone is not enough. We must focus on transforming the entire economic system by sector coupling and power to X technologies. The technology for sector coupling is available today, but our current infrastructure system is not. We need to keep expanding and upgrading power grids, increasing energy storage and scaling up the production capacity of green hydrogen. Can we do this alone? We cannot do it alone. This is, as I said, it's an exciting time. The global effort to achieve our climate targets certainly requires adjustments and paradigm shifts. But it will also bring new opportunities and accelerate the country's economic growth. Around the globe, different organizations need to build up alliances and join forces. Already today, more than 130 countries have set or are developing net zero targets. And I'm glad to talk to you today to raise a call for action to team up and find against global warming. Let's do it together. Thank you very much.